Hello artists, this is Cindy Pope here at the Cool Tool Studio. I'm going to show you another curio project using Robert Danzig's Faubone. Faubone is a thermoplastic that looks a lot like ivory when it's finished. You can cut it and etch it, and you can also heat it and bend it. So I'm excited to show you how to design and etch on Faubone. Let's talk about the tools we're going to use for this project. We're going to use a Silhouette Curio. Um, Cool Tools has these in, in kits, or you can also buy it individually and buy each tool that you'd like to use. We're also going to need wet dry sandpaper and water. We're going to use some of these disposable applicators when adding color. I'm going to use a scalpel. I'm using something new called Shiva. These are wax oil paint sticks, and I also use them as a patina, color patina on metal clay. We're using Robert Danzig's faux bone and we're choosing the pre-cut cuffs and these pre-cut cuffs come in two different thicknesses. This one we're going to be using the 0.079 which is just about two millimeters and you'll see during the project why that's important. We're also going to use DecoArt Media. This is carbon black and I use this to get into um, the recesses that we etch in to get a really nice deep black color. We don't use alcohol pens for that because when I go over it with alcohol color, it'll erase the black. So this is more permanent. I need some masking tape. I like um, Scotch Blue. It's very thin. And we also need some alcohol uh, ink pens, which you can purchase at Cool Tools. Okay, now that we're done showing you the materials we're going to use and some examples of the cuff we're going to make, let's go ahead and figure out how to design this. So I'm using the Silhouette software, and if you want some intros, um, some of my other vi videos are going to show you the intros. I also have some classes on CraftCast where you can learn all about the software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and design for the front and back of the pre-made cuffs. And um, you don't have to design on the inside, but I kind of like having a little message on the inside. It can be a quote, it can be an uh, inscription related to the person you're giving it to. And what I'm doing in this one is I'm doing a cuff that relates to what Robert Danzig, who's the inventor of Faubone, does. And it's all about creating amazing, interesting pieces. So, we're going to go ahead and design the front, but before we do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the platform system on the Curio. So, what the Curio has is it has a rigid base, and then it has little plastic slats, and they have numbers on them, and there's two that have twos on them, and that represents two millimeters. There's one that has one millimeter, a uh, one on it, and it's one millimeter. And there's one that's a mat, and the mat is also one millimeter thick. So when we talk about putting all six platforms on, that's what we're talking about, all these items. So the nice thing about this rigid base and the curio system is you can etch fairly thick items. So, But as we etch thicker items, what we do is we remove that plastic so it's not hitting the top of the carriage. So here's my basic paradigm, um, 0 to 1.25 millimeters of thickness. I use all six platforms, but 1.5 to 2.5, I'm going to use five millimeters, and then when we get over 2.75, I'm going to use four and so forth. I haven't really gone um, thicker than 3.75 millimeters. So our faux bone pre-cut cuffs come in two thicknesses. The thinner one is 0.079 inches, and the thicker one is 0.125 inches. So 0.079 is two millimeters. So I go to my table and I say, I'm going to use five millimeters of platforms, which means I'm going to remove the one. If you use the thicker one, you're going to remove a two millimeter platform. Um, what we're going to do for this particular design is I'm going to use the thinner one, but sometimes you want a more substantial cuff, so it kind of just depends on what you're going to be designing. So let's go back to our design. So we're going to do this, and I'm going to open a new tab. Whenever you open a new tab, the page setup screen will come up. You want to be sure it says Automatic Curio 85 by 6 if you haven't plugged into your Curio recently, um, you can put in custom, but you want to be sure it's 8.5 by 6 and landscape. And you want to type in, choose the Curio 8.5 by 6 inch mat. 
The goal here is that what's on your screen, the virtual mat, looks exactly like what is on the real mat. That way we'll make sure we're etching and cutting in the right place. So we are going to close down that tab, and now we're going to go ahead and start designing. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the shape drawing tool. I'm going to choose rectangle, and I'm going to do a long skinny rectangle. Um, don't worry about getting the right measurements because there's an easy place to put it in. Normally it's up here at the top. If you have a small laptop, it's going to be nested under the scale functions, and it's really hard to type in there. All my students with small laptops have found. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to an alternative place, but if you have a bigger laptop, I wanted to show you where you could do it. So we're going to open the transform panel right here, and it has a lot of things, centering, uh, rotating, but it also has scale, and I can easily type in the dimensions here. So it's 7.75 wide and one inch tall. I'm going to hit apply. And this is the size they all come in, but if your wrist is smaller, you might need to take off some of the ends. So I'm going to change the color to brown. Brown is my color for um, the size of the media. Um, it could be a piece of clay. It could be a piece of leather. It can be a faux bone cuff or a faux bone sheet. I'm going to change the thickness to one for the purposes of this video, but I will tell you when you are designing, I don't want you to do that. Your line thickness always needs to be at zero. So this is showing me the outside dimensions also of where my design will be. So I don't want my design right up at the edge. Well, in this case, I'm going to put some text on it. So let me show you how to use text. There are two places for text. There's a text to the left where you can input text. There is a more uh, comprehensive text on the right-hand side. When you click on text, a lot of um, intuitive menu items come up at the top. So there's two or three different places. I'll show you the way I like to do it. So this is large text. So I'm going to just type it in. Uh, this is Robert's catchphrase. He likes you to play when you're creating. So we're going to choose play well. And then I'm going to go over to the um, one on the right hand side and I'm going to choose my font. And to choose the font, when, you, when you've double clicked on a box with text in it, it takes you into um, kind of like word processing mode. And so you treat it just like you would a word processor. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to choose Bolton. It's a freeware font, which is something I can use in a video. The character spacing. I'm going to put it about 120. I like my characters spaced out a little bit. Um, that may, It depends on the font. And then I'm going to fit it up on our cuff. I'm going to double click. I don't need quite this much space. I'm going to put a little something in the middle, but I don't need that much space. So I want to make sure it's not too big, but I do want to, I want it readable. And I do want it to be right on the top of the wrist. Once I've got that done, I'm going to do a drag box around the words and the brown box. And I'm going to go up here to center. Again, if you have a small screen, that icon could be under this little center tab. I want to show you one thing when you've got uh, letters that go down like a Y. It is going to center it in a weird way. So you may have to center up and down again by eye. You can also squish it up a little bit, as long as it doesn't uh, negatively affect the look of your font. So now I've, I've played around with the bad effect that Y was having. Now I'm going to create a little uh, um, graphical image. In order to do that, I'm going to also change the line thickness for all these new lines to one, just so you could see them. So I'm going to go to the line drawing tool, but I'm going to choose a special character. This is called a pentagon. I'm going to make it kind of large so you can see it. It has five different sides, but it's got a little paper clip in the middle, and you can change it to six, seven, eight. And what I'm going to do is create a, like a nut for hardware, because Robert likes to use hardware in his pieces. So I'm going to hit the shift key, and then I'm going to click on this bottom button, and it twists it. 
and if I click the top button, it's going to twist it the other way. So you can go either way that you want. I'm going to go this way this time. And then I want to put a circle in the middle because a nut has a circle where the screw goes in. And once I've got that done, I'm going to do a drag box around both of them and I'm going to center them. Once I've got them centered, I'm going to do object, make compound path. You could also do, if you have a Mac, command E. If you have a PC, con control E. We'll do the same thing in most cases. Then I'm going to shrink it down and we're going to put it in between these letters. So I'm going to, whenever you move something accidentally, it's best to hit undo instead of trying to move it back. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to add one more space. And I think I'm going to make the words a little bit larger. So I'm going to center all of this. But again, I have to pull this up because that Y is, is not making me happy. So I am still going to put this in the real center between the words. I'm not going to put it in the center by volume. I'm going to put a couple more of these on the other sides. Um, I think this would be really cool to drill holes through and put either resin or um, concrete or uh, there's a two-part colored resin that Cool Tools has. Any of those products would be, look really cool if you drilled out a part and filled it with, with that. So I'm going to put two on each end different sizes. I'm going to do a drag box and select both of these and I'm going to go to replicate and we are going to mirror to the left. Saves me a little bit of time in having to duplicate those. They can be exactly in the same place but I'm actually going to move them so they're not as matched. So once you've got everything where you want it, I'm going to go through and just select all the red parts. I'm going to hit Control E on my screen. It would be Command E if you had a, a Mac. And then I'm going to center everything and see what happens. And I think that's pretty good because the Y is not too close to the bottom. Next thing we do is we do what's called a curio fill. Um, there's a little trick to making the fill tight because we're going to take the precision engraver and we're going to go back and forth with that sharp point on the faux bone to create depth. Well, um, normally it wouldn't be tight enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the scale window. I'm going to increase 200%. I'm going to leave it right where it is because it was perfectly placed. I'm going to open the emboss deboss window. On this window, you never want to be on the emboss. You always, always, always want to be on DBoss. Emboss will put your design in the wrong place. Try to remember that. We're going to go to the crosshatch and we're going to slide all the way to the left. If your computer is older, it's easier to type in 0.005 inches or if you're on millimeters, it's 0.1 millimeters. So um, sometimes the slider will lag down an old computer. Always release at the end. And now we're just going back to that scale menu and going back 50%. It's going to put it right where it needs to be. At this point, we are going to select the brown and the blue. We're going to group them. When you have two different colors, you always group. Now we've finished with the first side. We're going to make the second side. I've got an extra copy of the brown box. I'm going to move on to the design screen. And I'm going to bring some words in, but there it's a different type of words. It's smaller text. So I'm going to go over to the text box. And I'm going to change this to about 12 point. That is going to make it come in at a smaller size. What I did was I went to the internet and I went to a synonym creator 
or a thesaurus, and I went in and I typed in create, and I got all these different words that relate to create. And I chose the ones I wanted, and you could do this for words that mean family, you could do things like the word love in different languages, I've done uh, quotes in Elvish, really something personal to the person you're making it for. And again, you don't need to do two sides if you don't want to. So once I've got those in Microsoft Word, I'm just going to copy them to the clipboard. I'm going to go back to the Silhouette software and I'm going to paste. And they're going to come in really big. I'm going to zoom out and when something comes in that comes in in a big long line, but if I double click, it puts me in word processing mode and I can grab the teal bar and word wrap it. And I'm thinking I'm wanting three lines for this cuff. So I've centered the alignment and I'm gonna center them to the brown box. And now we need to choose a font. And this font isn't too bad, but it's pretty thick. And I really want this readable. So I'm gonna use a special type of font from the Silhouette store called a sketch font. And I'll show you what some of them look like. They're, um, they look like one single line, almost like a handwriting. And there's, they come in many, many different styles. I own about 35 of them. So this looks like writing. So it's gonna be readable and it's gonna be very thin. And these work beautifully on Fobone. It almost looks like you wrote on it in pen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you where you can get these. What you do is you go to the, there's a tab that says the Silhouette Store. And so once we click on the Store tab, you'll choose Fonts, and then you'll type in Sketch and it'll bring up a lot of these different types of fonts and you can choose some you like. Um, there's commercial licenses for most of these fonts and they're all different ones and they have, a re they have regular fonts too. But um, these are ones that I like when I'm using uh, like a whole quote or a long paragraph to put on something because it makes them look more like a handwritten note. And you, when you download them, they'll, they'll uh, load into the Silhouette software. So I'm going to choose Amy La because I like that one. It looks like handwriting. And so I'm going to slide it out to three lines, but it's still going to be too long. So when, I do, when it's too long still, I'm just going to go from the corner and shrink down the spacing. And I shrank it down a little bit too much, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger. My rule is make it as big as I can for the area. So I'm going to center it to the brown box. And then I'm going to group. But um, it's red, and red is my cut color, so I'm going to ungroup really quickly. I'm going to change the color to green because I have two colors for etching. My colors are blue and green. When I do two different sides, I usually put um, a different color on each side. So now I've got it green, I'm gonna group it in. And then we are gonna go ahead and get ready to send the first part. But first I need to take that line thickness to zero on both sides. And make sure um, that I move the second one off because we're gonna start with the first and then we'll flip it over. Okay, let's get started now that we've designed our project. Let's get started and put the faux bone on the mat. This comes with two two millimeter platforms, a one millimeter platform, and a mat, which is one. So that's a total of six. This is a two millimeter thick um, piece of faux bone. So the rule is with the curio, every, for every millimeter and a half, you remove one millimeter platform. And that's how we can use different thicknesses of material. If you're using the three millimeter faux bone, you would want to remove a two millimeter platform. So I'm taking the one millimeter out. I'm putting it right here so I don't forget about it because I do want to put it back so I can use it for metal clay. 
And then I'm going to put it back on. Um, I like to put double-sided tape between my um, different platforms. You can do that at home if you'd like to. So I'm going to make sure it's nicely clipped in there. And then what I've got is a piece of the faux bone, and this is the 0.079 inches, and it's one inch thick and 7.75 inches wide. You know from our design video that we put it right in the right place, so it's going to know where to etch. I'm going to really push that, push that down, but just to be sure it doesn't move, I'm going to um, use masking tape. And this is a very thin masking tape. It's called um, Scotch Blue, and it's for keeping the paint getting into the edges of your projects. So what I do is I put it so the tape just touches the edge, and it just keeps it from moving. I'm going to do that on all sides, and I'll do it when I flip it over to put the wording on the back. You also want to do it in the ends. If your wording doesn't go all the way up to the ends, you could actually go over the edge. You don't want it sticking out over to get caught in the mechanism, though. Let's use this extra piece right here. Okay. We're ready to go. You want to make sure nothing's sticking up to catch the etcher. Okay, now we're going to load this into the curio. We are going to gently push it along the wheels and you want to roll it in and you want this little notch to be past the first wheel before you hit this middle load unload button. There we go. We have the precision engraver in there. It's the sharp one. I'm putting it in the left hand red holder. When you lock it into place, you want to get down and look at it and make sure it's all the way down. Some of the holders are tighter than others and I have had students that don't have it sitting down where it's supposed to and it just doesn't perform well unless it's you know properly placed. So let's go ahead and send to the silhouette. Okay, once we have our designs completed and they're grouped with the boxes they relate to, we're going to etch one at a time. I'm going to start with the front. We're going to make sure that the brown box is exactly in the same place as where I have placed the cuff on my mat. Normally, I will etch the cuffs white for the video. I actually um, colored it with alcohol ink so you could actually see the etching taking place. Otherwise, it would be slightly uninteresting. Okay, so we have our play well. We're going to go to the send tab. When you go to the send tab, it's always going to start on simple. And simple will look all red. Well, we just took a lot of time to color coat this. So we know that's not right. We are always cutting by line color. The reason we're doing that is because we have color-coded lines to do different things. So when you look at a design, you'll know blue is etch, brown represents the size of the piece of media, and you'll kind of really get used to that paradigm. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to uncheck everything. And then we're going to take everything in the order it's going to be done. So we always etch first. So I am going to hold down my shift key and drag the blue up to the top. I'm going to drag the green up to the top. I'm going to drag the brown down to the bottom because really we, for the most part, with the curia, we don't do anything by the brown. It's just to tell us how big our design should be. And I, then I'm going to choose the tool numbers. There's two tools, and I can't zoom in on this part for you, but there's two tools. There's the red tool holder and the blue tool holder. Usually I put a cutter in the red tool holder and an etcher in the blue, but since all we're doing is etching, I'm going to leave everything in the left tool holder, and that's why you'll be placing things. I'm going to click on the blue, and you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen, the blue will light up. When it's lit up, that's a sign to you that that is what the color that's going to be worked on. So once you've got um, every the tool holders figured out, and in this case with faux bone, 
The only tool holder I'm going to be using is left because I don't do any cutting on faux bone. We're actually sawing it according to Robert's videos. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the material settings and I'm going to set a setting up for faux bone. So I'm going to go down to F and my user defined settings. And I have set up a setting for user to, for Phobone, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add one in case this is your first project on the Curio. So the way we add a setting is we hit these three little dots down at the bottom. I hit the plus key. I type in Phobone new. I type in faux bone new. I'm going to hit the plus key to add an etch action because we are not cutting. We want this to be an etch action. We're etching into the faux bone. I need to go back to the cut action and I need to remove the cut action. This is very important because you might accidentally use cut instead of etch and you think that wouldn't be a big deal, but the cut action moves in a different way and it's not as smooth as the etch. I'm going to go really fast because we sometimes are etching for a long time, so I'm going to go 9 and then I'm going to go 15 to 17 and I'm going to do one pass at a time. I'm going to save. And once I've saved, I'm going to X out of this add a user to find setting. So now I'm going to go find that one. And when you first input it, it's going to be at the bottom. But when you um, open it up the next time, it'll be alphabetized. Okay, so when you type, put in a user to find setting, we're going to look down and make sure this is what we put in. I do this every single time I etch, even though I have created these and been doing this for seven years. Always look down and make sure this looks right. And you also want to make sure it says send. If it says send to Q, um, you want to open up the Q and delete whatever's in the Q. Um, when you are ready to go for the first time, you want to make sure it says send. Some people stop in the middle and then they forget there's things sitting in the queue and they, it will save those. So I'm going to hit send. I'm going to let it go through the whole process and then we'll go on and we'll do the second side. So we've etched the front and we flipped it over and if you're wondering why I put color on these, you will not be able to see the etching on the white and obviously you're going to use, we're not going to put color on it when we're etching, but in order for you to see the process happening in front of you on the video, we colored it. So when it etches, you're going to see the white faux bone underneath and you'll see what it's etching. Okay. So I've turned it over and I've placed it in the right place, the way, where we put it on our design. We're going to load it. And then we're going to move the backside design up to the front and we're going to send to the silhouette. Once we're done etching, we are going to go back to the design tab. We're going to move the front side off. And we're going to move our design for the second side onto the mat. We're going to put it in the same place and we're going to make sure it's exactly on the grid. So we're going to zoom in. I always recommend you zoom, zoom in to make sure it's on the grid. I need to move it just the tiniest bit. We are going to flip it over also on the real mat and tape it down. I'm going to switch to green and the green will light up. 
I'm also going to change the setting to the one I just added. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, but remember the second time you reopen the software, it's going to be alphabetized. And then I'm going to send to the silhouette. When the etching is finished, we're going to go back and see if we want to go again. If not, we are going to go to the Design tab, Save, and then we'll go on to Coloring and Forming our Cuff. Best of luck. The front side I actually sent twice, but the back side I only sent once. And as we discussed in the video, this is a single line font, so you're going to get a really, uh, something that's going to look handwritten. Okay, we've finished etching our project and it's two-sided. So we have an inside message, which I like in a cuff. What we're gonna do first is we are going to add the patina on the side that has just words because I want to put this carbon black down inside. Remember, Robert likes to remove the shiny skin that's on this product before he starts. But in this case, we have not done that because we, don't, we wanna put this black in just the recesses. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. I put it on and I wipe it fast. And in the video portion where we showed it cutting, we put um, alcohol ink on it so you could actually see what's happening. But I do etch mine white. So we're going to Wipe this off. And I'll sand a little bit too. So we have a nice message in the inside with all the synonyms for create. I'm going to add one more coat. we go. So on the front side, I got a little black on there, but we're going to sand that off. On the front side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Shiva paint stick. So let's turn this paper towel over a little bit. And we're going to use the Shiva paint sticks. And I want the color to get on the base of the piece too. So what I'm going to do in this case is I am going to do the wet sanding and remove that skin. And then we'll put the color on. got three sandpapers. I double etched this so it's pretty deep so I'm going to start with the 320 because I do want to get um, that little, um, it's almost like a coating, a shiny coating off. I'm going to go down to the 400. And it depends on the, um, the finish you like. If you really like the shiny finish, um, almost like ivory finish that Robert gets, um, you can get a more matte finish and you wouldn't want to go up to the 600. But I'm going to go ahead and use the 600. And I'm not removing a lot of material, but I am removing that skin and creating a little sheen. At the very end, what Robert will do is he'll go over it with the back side of the sandpaper to really pick. A, it's almost like a buffing that you would do with metal clay. So I'm going to dry this off now. Clean up a tiny bit. And now we're going to add color to the top. So I'm, I picked a three set that includes a red. Robert likes to use red in a lot of his work, and I used his catchphrase on this cup. So we are going to take the red one out. And if you want to try these out, they come in sets of three, but they also have a big set with all the colors, um, the matte colors, and they also have one with iridescence. And I, I love the iridescence, but the matte ones are great for a patina on metal clay. 
So this, this is a very interesting product. It is an oil paint and oils, um, when left to dry, create a skin, but it has a wax in it. And so what you wanna do is you wanna peel off the skin when you use it. And these can be used on fa fabrics and a, a lot of different products. Um, and I'm gonna um, use the big applicator because I wanna get it all over. So I'm gonna get a lot on here. Actually, I think I'm going to peel the top off and actually color it on. And you want to make sure all the white in the recesses turns red. I put little, um, like, pieces of hardware on there and you totally could do this type of project and then drill holes where the hardware is. Okay, once you've got it on there, we are going to wipe. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a beautiful solid down inside and then kind of a, a muted color on the outside. And I like that it looks a little antiqued. I'm going to put a little bit more over here. And you just work with the color, and you could add more colors. The colors blend nicely until you get exactly what you want. Okay, once we've finished with the color on both sides, we're going to round out the edges. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to finish the edges with the jewel tool. Um, you can use the files like Robert does. He's got a lot of good tools, but I love the way the jewel tool works with faux bone. I'm using the scratch eraser that comes with your kits. It's my favorite pro um, attachment for this. And we're not going to go really, really fast. I'm going slow and steady. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to round this off. turned up a little bit. And you can recolor the edges. I like them kind of the ivory white. I think it looks kind of cool. And I think if you do sand or um, jewel, use jewel tool on the edges, you'll be a little happier with your final product. I think it'll be a little more comfortable. We're going to do the same with the back. Get ready with the vacuum. You're going to have little schwarf from the faux bone everywhere. Um, the jewel tool comes with some screws. You can screw it into your workbench. It's moving a little bit on me, so, or you could put it on a rubber mat. So I've got the sides rounded, but I do like to curve the edges, so. because I don't like those pointy edges. I don't think that's very comfortable. Now this one is 7.75 inches. So if you need to take off material, you can use this to just shave it down to size. I also have another one where I've made a, a diagonal cut and had it meet um, with two uh, diagonals. And I like that design too. I 
I go back over and get any kind of like swarfy places off. You just run it over and it just takes them right off. Like right there. Fabulous. We're just going to run over this quickly with a sanding stick and we've got it finished. Okay, we finished our piece and we've colored it. You can also color after you bend. Um, right here I've got a little bit of the pink color from the front. So I'm going to go ahead and just wet sand that a little bit. And it comes right off and I'm wet sanding with the 600. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just taking a tropical shine and we're just refining the edges up and down. And around the bottom. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna take advantage of the thermoplastic properties of this and bend it into a cuff, similar to the one I have. What I like to do is I use a cuff form. Um, these are ones that Cool Tool sells and I would double up on them. So you fit it around your wrist. And I like the bottoms to be curved in a little bit. And so we're going to put that right here. And a lot of times I like to heat it on top of that because the heat of the copper is going to help start to bend this. So we're going to put this up high. We're going to take a heat gun. You can also use your home oven and you can also use a toaster oven. Oh, I forgot. This gets very hot. So let's go ahead and put gloves on. You want to protect yourselves. You don't need a really heavy glove. These gloves are made for um, people using curling irons. And they're going to carry some at Cool Tools that you can buy. And this is the point 0.079 inches. So this is going to bend a little bit quicker. And I'm actually going to do half at a time. I think that's a little bit easier. And when I put it in the oven, I use the, I do the whole thing at once. But with the heat gun, we we're gonna I would start to move down to the other end, and then I would lose the flexibility down here. And putting it over this um, cuff form, you'll see when it starts to get limp. I think we're getting there. Oops, I don't think I had it quite hot enough. Oh, there we go. And I can wet sand this again. My oil paints weren't quite dry. So you want to hold it for a minute because you want to set it. Now we're going to start on the other end. And then we're going to have a cuff that we can wear. Um, do move the heat gun when you're using a heat gun, do move it. I do really think an oven is easier, but if you're trying to get something done quickly, um, and some people don't like to use their ovens for anything except for food. And the nice thing about this is if you don't get it perfect, you can um, put it in the oven, it'll straighten right out and you get another try at it. So I made about 60 cuffs one time for a class I did in Faux Bone. And um, you know, any ones that didn't look quite right, I just readjusted them. I'm gonna see if it's still warm enough to Bend that part around. 
think we're gonna reheat right over here and just get that bent around a little differently. Right there, that little bubble. Please watch Robert's videos. He, he's got some really cool tricks on using this thermoplastic. And his video on cool tools is just fabulous. Okay. Don't let go till it cools though. Um, I've seen in a couple videos Robert's done that I've watched, which I've watched everything he's done. Um, he, I've also seen him dunk this in water. So if you're going to do your coloring afterwards, you can totally dunk it in water. And what that does is it cools it down and it sets the shape. There we go. And when it's totally cool, I'm going to give it another sanding. And then I'm going to let this dry for a day or so. So here's our finished product. It has a message on the inside and Robert's wonderful catchphrase, play well. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Cool Tools Studio to work with the Curio and Robert Danzig's amazing faux bone. It's a wonderful new media and I think you'll enjoy using it with the Curio. Thanks again and play well. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.